Thank you very much. Um, uh, my title is Director of Happiness. I get asked a lot what that means. And the truth is it changes consistently. Um, <laughs> Uh, it started out just uh, basically meaning that I was responsible for the happiness of our customers and uh, kind of as a, a, a play on you know, word, at WordCamps and such, we have the happiness bar, you know, but, but being that person who's the expert who's there to help um, with WordPress related issues. And then because of the size of our company and how quickly things change in, in kind of a small uh, startup, then that turned into uh, helping to manage um, employee happiness as well and, and different things. So we, we joke that I'm the HR department. I'm not really the HR department, but we joke that I'm the HR department. And, um, but yeah, basically any, any aspect of um, happiness in our company, I, I'm kind of the go-to person for that. Um, I have an interesting perspective, I think, on contributing to WordPress as a non-developer because um, I really am fairly new to WordPress. Uh, in 2014, I went to my first WordCamp in Chicago, and I had not started working with the WP Ninjas yet, um, but I was talking with them about the, the prospect of doing so, so I wanted to learn a little bit more about this crazy WordPress thing. And I remember being so overwhelmed <laughs> at that WordCamp, and just so much information getting thrown at me, and it was, you know, just, it was crazy, and I'm thinking, man, you know, like I enjoy public speaking, but I could never speak at a WordCamp. Like these these guys, they know their stuff. Like they're on the ball. Like this is you know this is very overwhelming, and I I feel like I learned nothing <laughs> at at that WordCamp because so much information was thrown at me. But I realized later on, uh, as I started learning WordPress, like how how much I actually um, uh, picked up there. Um, and interestingly enough, less than a year later, after being at that WordCamp and being like so flustered and thinking, man, I'll never be able to contribute to this awesome community. I was honored to speak here last year uh, on my customer support experience. So not on a WordPress related topic, but on a topic about how to keep your customers happy. And I shared kind of an interesting <laughs> anecdote then uh, that, I, that I won't repeat about, just a, just a funny like customer support experience that I had. And it pales in comparison to one that I would like to share with you. <laughs> um, I, I had what, what I'm going to call the, the best support um, ticket ever uh, this year. And I apologize because I didn't realize the resolutions would be like this, so I actually took screenshots of the conversation so you could see verbatim what was said by uh, me and the customer. And I don't think you're gonna be able to read them. Um, so I will kind of read them for you. Uh, we got a support ticket and the only text in it was, dead won't start. <laughs> and I got excited because I love a challenge, guys. Like <laughs> a challenge. That, that to me, that's a challenge. So one of our uh, other support team members actually got this first and laughed about it. I was like, send that guy to me. I mean, I'll, I'll work on this one. This will be fun. So dead won't start. And so then I said, oh man, no, I can't read it either. I said, can you help me understand what it is that I can do to help you, Charles? And uh, I mean, I'm, sorry, had a little bit of trouble. And Charles said, uh, was plugged in where it worked before, hit on off dead. The other plug I knew was working same. Looked for reset, no button found. <laughs> so we're a WordPress plugin, and I'm really confused at this point. <laughs> well, I'm trying to give him like, the benefit of the doubt here. So I'm like, okay, uh, was plugged in, wouldn't start. Okay, so he's using the plugin, wouldn't start, can't activate it. I don't know. This is this. We're gonna figure out what's going on, you know. Um, so I said, Charles, this is the support. Uh, refund email account for NinjaForms is form building software for WordPress. Is there a specific issue I can help you with? And Charles uses our customer service feedback tool to give me a poor rating and says, tell the customer what's going on. I'm like, okay. <laughs> tell, tell me what's going on, Charles, because I don't, I don't understand. It was, it was a very interesting experience. Oh, oh no. So then he says, where's my support in this issue? I said, Charles, I would love to assist you. I'm very sorry, I'm not clear what the problem is that you're having. Can you describe in detail where in your NinjaForms installation on your WordPress site is not working properly? He says, it does not turn on. What more can I say, Mr. Happiness? <laughs> <laughs> All right. I'm still enjoying the challenge at this point. This is still fun for me. So then I'm like, All right. I tell my support guys, look, if you get a customer like this, that there's obviously like some communication breakdown kind of give them this uh, copy paste, it's not really copy paste, but break it down, tell them exactly what you need from them. So I go into this big thing, I say, can you provide a screenshot of your issue, a copy of your system status page where we get some information about your WordPress install? 
A link to your website with temporary admin credentials, a link to the affected form, and a detailed description of the issue you're having. If you can walk me through what you are doing, what is happening, what you're expecting to happen, that's very important for support. What, you're, what are you doing, what is happening, and what are you expecting to happen, I've learned is, is key customer service. Uh, I might be able to assist you, but I'm afraid I don't understand the issue you're having, so I'm not able to assist any, any further. I, I, I just don't know what your problem is yet. And then, 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 then the, the magic happens. <coughs> Dr. Happiness, there is only one part that has electricity going, the blender, which has a switch on it. When you push the button on, nothing, nada. Have I not reached Ninja customer service? As it turns out, there's a company called Ninja Blender that makes blenders. And, and if you Google the phrase Ninja support, you find us first. <laughs> and so he was absolutely insistent that we were the blender company. Um, and it was, it was just very funny. So I said, Charles, you know, we don't make blenders. We're a software company. I think you may have uh, reached the wrong company for your needs. I'm not 100% certain, but I think this is the company and support form that you might be looking for. And I actually sent him a link to the Ninja Blender support form. We didn't hear back from him for a day. A day. <laughs> a, yeah, a day. <laughs> the next day, here's what's special about this one. This was not a reply to his email. This is a brand new support ticket that he made via the support form on our website, again, not the link that I sent him. This has to be a joke, have someone who understands English contact me. <laughs> oh man. <laughs> so this time I was like, all right, I'm going way above and beyond. And I actually, I typed out like a full page document, like w without trying to be condescending. And I said, you know, this is our website. It looks like this. This is the Blender's website. Here's their phone number. We don't offer phones, you know, it's, and he, he didn't email us back after that. Um, <laughs> But uh, yeah, it was just so funny. I sent him the link to that support form and he still used our support form to create a new ticket. Uh, it was just funny. So, but that's just one of the, the, the really funny support tickets. So we got this last year, we really laugh about the blender incident. Um, it was just really funny, like watching that process unfold. And when he finally said the blender, everyone in the office was like, oh, I totally get it now. Um, but yeah, it was great. So what, what I'd actually like to talk to you today is about codeless contribution, being able to contribute to the WordPress community without knowing any code. I don't know much code at all. I've learned a little bit in the last two years as I've worked with WordPress, but I'm definitely not a developer. But by uh, being able to speak at WordCamps on things that aren't even necessarily strictly WordPress related, I've still been able to give back to the community. And so it's a topic that, I, that I'm kind of passionate about and I think is really exciting and I think people don't realize the areas that we have to contribute to WordPress uh, without, uh, without knowing a lot of code. Um, by the way, this is a real URL, uh, make.wordpress.org slash great dash again. Make WordPress org great again. Um, Brian Krogsgaard, uh, someone gave him admin on .org and he added that the other day and I just thought it was really funny. Um, obviously parroting the Trump, the Trump slogan and it, it actually directs to the uh, code contributors page. Um, but the purpose is to make WordPress great again. Now how do we do that? How do we contribute as non-developers or even as developers, how do we contribute to WordPress? Matt Mullenweg, in his uh, State of the Word speech in 2014, coined the phrase five to the future. Is anybody in here familiar with that or have you heard the, the five for the future phrase before? Okay. So for those of you that hadn't, haven't, five for the future, the concept is basically, look, you make your living on WordPress. If WordPress dies, what happens to your business? It's gone. If WordPress's market share starts disappearing, your market share starts disappearing. And so Matt's point to the WordPress community was, look, instead of just being interested in increasing your slice of the WordPress pie, make the pie of WordPress bigger. Contribute your time and resources. 5% of your time and resources is what he asked companies who make their living on WordPress to contribute back into <laughs> core. And so how do we do that? Well, he offered some uh, ways in his uh, state of the word speech. Um, this is how I imagine most WordPress contributors, or how I used to, at least. Um, I, I, I can't even type without looking at the keyboard now, and, and I'm definitely a tech person, and so I, yeah. But I, there's so many people so much smarter than me, and that's how I, I kind of imagine everybody who, who contributes to, to WordPress to look like. Um, by the way, I use a gratuitous amount of animated GIFs. That way I figure if my talk is terrible, at least you may be mildly entertained. Um, <laughs> But Matt, Matt suggested several ways. He started with 
development, you know, obviously contributing to core, doing some theme plugin review, you know, reviewing the, the code of new themes or plugins, and doing security audits on themes or plugins. Now, before anybody who comes in here and says, wait a minute, I thought this was for non-developers, I'm out. Um, <laughs> he also continued with adding documentation, contributing in the support forums, working on the training team, testing, translation, and then he ended with whatever it might be that helps move the WordPress mission forward. So my goal for this talk is to give you kind of a, <coughs> a uh, idea of where WordPress needs help right now, where you can contribute, and no matter what your skill set is, I fully believe that there is somewhere that you can contribute to the WordPress community if you want to. And so I want to show you where some of those opportunities are at. The first thing you need to do is get connected with the community. Um, if anybody watches How It's Made, like I love that show, and I could literally, I, I might get distracted right now and just watch that gift for like 10 minutes, but it's, uh, I, I love those kinds of shows. Um, so like all that I put in, we'll tell you a little bit about my personality. Um, but make.wordpress.org is kind of your homepage for WordPress contribution. If you're interested in contributing to WordPress at all, that is the site that you need to bookmark. And on the front page of that site, you're actually going to find a much more detailed description of all of the teams that I'm going to discuss here. And you can go and join those teams as well. I, I put slash chat at the end of that because there's actually, if you, is anyone, well, there's, there's a chat tool called Slack, which you may or may not be familiar with. And it's a really awesome tool. You can have it just up in your browser. You can download a native client for it. And WordPress actually has a massive Slack community where you can collaborate in real time with people who are constantly contributing to WordPress. And if you go to make.wordpress.org slash chat, you can set up, uh, if you have a wordpress.org account set up, which is very easy to set up, then you can get an invite to that Slack channel. And that is your gateway into interacting with these teams on a much deeper level. Um, so I definitely recommend that you bookmark make.wordpress.org and that if you want to get involved that you join the chat and you can ask those teams uh, in real time, hey, what's some stuff you guys need? How can I plug in? When's your next meeting? Um, and, and start, start uh, connecting with the community in that way. The first way that I want to discuss that you can contribute to core is documentation. <coughs> How many of you have used the codex before in your experience with WordPress? The Codex is an awesome tool. It's a little heady sometimes, and they're working on that. But how many of you have seen, seen like a code example or something in the Codex, or is this something you're working with, and you're like, man, this is, I mean, I just really wish that this had a, a clearer explanation. Make a clear explanation. When you figure out how it works, come back to it and go to that team and say, hey, I think if you worded it like this, maybe more people would understand what's going on. No, so the documentation team is responsible for the Codex. They're also responsible for the handbooks. There's a lot, a lot of terminology that that I'm gonna throw out that are all kind of related but, um, but, but definitely different. The handbooks are best practices for the other uh, contribution teams. So for example, there's a support contribution team, the forums team. There's a translation team, which they call the polyglots, the core, con core contributors. And all of those teams' best practices are laid out and documented by the documentation team. The documentation team also handles um, inline code uh, documentation, so if you want to document something in WordPress, if, if you do get a little bit more familiar with code. And they also maintain the site developer.wordpress.org. Then there's the support team, which I love because I'm passionate about support. Um, and this is my interpretation of some users who have reached out to us in the past. Um, I love A Christmas Story. Um, it is my favorite Christmas movie of all time. Uh, it was filmed about 30 minutes away from uh, where I grew up. so. Um, just like fun little tidbits. Um, the support forums you'll find at wordpress.org slash support. Most of you have probably encountered it at, at one point or another. Um, what you may not know is it's easier than you think to contribute to those support forums. And I'll, I'll tell you about that in a minute. The purpose of the support forum is basically just to assist with basic to advanced WordPress questions. It also includes plugin support and reviews for plugins. So if you become a member of the forums and support team, then reviews actually count as uh, the support forums and that kind of falls uh, onto your radar. And there's also an IRC for live support chat. Now I mentioned the Slack earlier. Right now, um, WordPress is discouraging the use of Slack for troubleshooting. Um, they want to keep basic troubleshooting support to the forums and an IRC and leave the Slack strictly for people that are contributing to core. 
So, but the, IR, the old IRC, it's a chat software. The old IRC is, does still exist and is maintained for WordPress, and that's where they ask if you want um, chat support that you go there. And I also added, uh, this might be the best way to get free stuff. Okay. And I say that because you're so the WP Ninjas, we have had some users in our forums who have really just gone above and beyond that when someone comes to our plugin page and asks a question, we don't maintain our forums. We have a sticky that says, hey, if you need help, come directly to us. Uh, oh, sorry, I'm messing with my mic. I'm going to mess everything up. Um, we, we have a sticky that says, hey, come directly to us for, for help and support. We don't monitor these forms regularly. It's, it's easier to handle everything all at one time. If you want to know more about that, you can watch my, um, my talk from last year at WordCamp. We actually talk about why we don't do forms and why we handle everything in one place. Um, but users still post there and they just don't read the sticky, which is, it, it happens. And we have some users who are awesome about constantly going in there and saying, hey, you know, if you need to get a hold of them, here's their actual support form, but I think your problem is this. And they're just advocates for us. And we reached out to them and said, you know, we're going to give you a free license to all of our products because you're awesome. We really appreciate the way that you're giving back to our community. Like, if there's a product that you want maybe like a free license for or something, I'm not going to say every company does it, but it, we would love to do that for people who, who help contribute to our, our open source efforts um, in the community. So especially with plugins, that can be a good way to, to, to start doing that. Some of the example questions that you'll come across in support, which some of you may be able to answer, just so you know that they're, they're easy. I actually opened up the support forums, and I just picked some questions um, when I made this slide. How do I align my featured image? If you know enough CSS, how to align a featured image, or if you just know the button in the WordPress page editor that, that changes the uh, image alignment, like you can answer this question, right? How do I remove the title from my posts? I forgot my password, can I get into my site? That one's a little bit more advanced, but there's also documentation on this. So even if you just want to spend some time in the support forums as a like volunteer Googler, like there are lots of articles that you can pull up that say, hey, I lost my password, how do I get in? That you can link, there's even a Codex article on it that you can send to that person, hey, I think this is what you're looking for. Uh, how do I change the background color? Just pretty basic things. How do I create a post and a category? Someone who, who doesn't quite understand how the taxonomy system works. There's lots of great documentation and, that you could offer to them. You don't have to know the answers, but knowing how to find the answers makes you invaluable in the support form because it's the first place that a lot of people are going to go when they're looking for help with WordPress. And the training team, which is a team that I tried to get involved in and I sadly let them down. Um, I had a lot of issues that happened and I ended up dropping the ball uh, on my personal assignment. Uh, but the training team is doing something that I think is really awesome. And they are essentially creating uh, a curriculum for WordPress. Like if you're going to go to school and learn how to use WordPress, they're developing the curriculum that your professor would use to teach you all of the ins and outs of WordPress. So it's, it's a very um, low level look at how WordPress runs, how WordPress functions. They're trying to document every feature in a user friendly way. The codex is pretty heavy-headed sometimes. You look at the codex and things are a little, uh, I don't quite understand. There's lots of code here. I don't know what's going on. These are step-by-step -step screenshots. Here's exactly what you click. Here's exactly what you're going to see happen next. And it walks you through some, some really uh, detailed processes. And it's, it's really awesome. Some, some uh, examples of tutorials that they're currently working on is categories versus tags, how to use widgets, the WordPress one-click install, writing better documentation for that how to use the customizer, and basic WordPress troubleshooting, stuff like that. If you've done any of that, if you know how to use the WordPress admin, you can contribute to the training team. They probably need someone to write a doc that you know how to do. Um, it's, it's a really awesome way to get plugged in and get involved. And then there's beta testing. And this is, my, this is the best gift I could come up with for beta testing. I think it's great. Um, if you fiddle with it enough, you will break something. Um, <laughs> And man, beta testing is so important. For example, uh, the WP Ninjas, we just rolled out a, a, a new update. But it's hard we're on our limited subset of systems to know, you know, hey, we've tested it and everything works great. But the crazy thing about WordPress is that there are like an infinite number of different WordPress configurations. There's an infinite number of the different sets of plugins you can have installed, different themes, host configurations, PHP versions, and all those things to come together in weird ways and to do some weird stuff. And WordPress needs beta testers on all of those different platforms, as much variety as they can get, just to tinker, just to test, see if you can break something. Sometimes it's fun. Maybe, maybe I'm just crazy, but I think it's fun to try to break software sometimes and make it do things it's not supposed to do. Um, and it doesn't 
always take a lot of skill. If you can just get a little error message or whatever, then hey, you know, just document that, send it back to the team. <laughs> Some ways to get involved in beta testing is you can follow the development at make.wordpress.org slash core, where they have a development blog. Whenever they push out a new update, they tell you, hey, here are the things that we changed. Here are the things we would like you to test. If you get a chance, install it somewhere, spin up a site somewhere, and just try to break it. Install it, see what happens. Tinker with their new feature and give them feedback. Say, hey, this, is, this works pretty cool. I like this. I don't quite like the way that this works. I got this error message, you know, whatever. Just want to let you know. Um, if you install the WordPress beta tester plugin, don't install this on a production site. Um, I, I would heavily advise against it, as would they. You probably won't have any issues, but don't risk it. Um, but if you have just a, a throwaway site or um, if you're using desktop server or something like that or MAMP, um, then sure, yeah, spin up the beta test and tinker with it. And then you can report issues in a special support form called Alpha Beta. And that's where they have all of their discussions for anything that you come across. Have you come across A-B testing? Is that Alpha Beta testing? No, A-B testing is, is a little bit different. A-B testing is essentially um, you give the user of your site two different you know? you get So let's say you have a landing page. Okay, and you're not sure how you want that landing page to, you're not sure how that's gonna best convert your users, for example. So you have two different ways that you wanna display the landing page, you don't know which one is best. Okay, explain. Right, explain. you just have two different versions of the same page, essentially. And so A-B testing allows you to randomly display the different page to different users, and then you can go and track, based on how the user interacted with that page, which one they like better. So that's what A-B testing is. Um, alpha beta testing is more, you're, you're, testing the software that they're getting ready to push out in production, but they want everybody to try to break it before they say that it's good. Uh, you can also beta test plugins that are being considered to put into core. Um, it took me way too long to realize that this was in my WordPress admin, um, but there's a special section uh, on the plugins uh, installer called beta testing. And all of the plugins that you'll find here, some of them do some pretty cool things, are plugins that are being looked at being integrated into core at some point in the future. And you have the opportunity now to install these onto your site, test them out, see how you think, see if you think that they're a valuable contribution to core or if you think core could live without it. And then you can go to that support forum, um, support slash alpha beta, and give your feedback there on the plugins. Uh, then there's the translation team, the polyglots. You will always see them referred to as po polyglots in WordPress. They very rarely um, uh, call it the translation team. And this is my fun Arrested Development GIF. Um, if you're not interested in development, it's probably not funny to you, but I think it's hilarious. Um, it surprised me how easy it was to, tr to uh, contribute to WordPress translation. If you know another language even a little bit well, you can probably help contribute to the translation in WordPress for that language. I actually um, went through, and I, I'm not comfortable enough in the, like, uh, I guess, uh, syntax of different regions of, of Spanish-speaking areas. But I know a little bit of Spanish, and so I just pretended to uh, submit a <laughs> translation for Spanish just so I can show you how easy it is. Um, and so what you'll do is you'll go to the translation team, which you can find from make.wordpress.org. Um, they have a little special thing that you just click to, to go to the site from there. And uh, then it gives you a list of all the projects that they currently need translations for. You pick your language. And it says, hey, we have this 96% translated. 4% 4, 4 of the strings aren't translated into Spanish or whatever yet. So you click it, and then here's an example. This one says, error save, saving media file. That's the English string. They just need to know what uh, the Spanish equivalent of that is. So you would just type that in that box and hit suggest new translation, and you're done. You've contributed to a WordPress translation. It's, it's that simple. Someone's going to review that, say, yes, that makes sense, or uh, no, you obviously never passed Spanish 1. Uh, and, uh, but it's, it's, it's a way to get started. And then there's the design and UX team. I am not a designer by any stretch of the imagination. If you can't already tell by my slides, they're just a, like a default Google template or something like that. But I, I don't make pretty things, um, but I know a lot of people who do. <laughs> and if you are one of those people, if you have an eye for design, then the design and UX team is definitely a team that you'll want to look into. They allow you to give input on the future of WordPress's design. Hey, I think these two shades of gray in the admin are a little too similar. You know, we should, you know, we should change those up. Um, there was actually you know, that really subtle, I think it was uh, you know, 4.3, that really subtle like, change of the admin gray that like, I don't understand why anybody would have made it, but somebody smarter than me decided that, that it was an important thing to do. But if you, want, if you want input into those kinds of decisions, 
then this is the team for you to get plugged into. Um, another thing they do, which I thought was really interesting when I looked at their team page, is they have a list of like 20, 30 other software products where they have mapped out the flow of the user's interaction with that product from beginning to end. So if you're using you know, Google Docs or something, they'll, they'll say, okay, well the user goes to this site, then they click this button, then they click this file type, then they do this, and then they do that. And what they do is they look into all of these other services and they say, hey, I really like the way that they handled this, I don't really like the way that they handled this. And then they use that feedback and those, those thought processes to contribute into the user experience for WordPress, which I think is really interesting. So they investigate and compare and contrast the design patterns of other software. And they also have lots of wireframes and mockups for, for different things. One of the projects that they're working on now is, is actually revisiting the revisions editor <coughs> in WordPress. Um, there, there are some, WordPress is, is really interesting because there are some parts of WordPress where you're like, wow, this is awesome and modern and great. And then there's other parts where you're like, why has this not been touched in the last 10 years, you know? And the revisions editor is one of those areas, I don't know if any of you have tinkered with it, but every time you change a post, it actually saves, um, you know, a timeline of what your posts look like through the whole thing. But the revision center is kind of clunky. It doesn't really fit into the nice modern look of the rest of the WordPress UI. And so they're rethinking that now. So that's an area that if you wanted to give some feedback on that, then the design UX team would be a good place for you to get plugged in. And the flow team. I like the flow team. Because I am, so at, at, at the WP Ninjas, they uh, call me, I hope affectionately, the Zackle. Um, because if there is something to complain about, I will probably find it and make a big fuss about it. Um, and that has been really good for our company in some ways. Maybe not so good for morale, but it's been good for the product, you know, in some ways. Um, I'll find those little things. I like to fight for the user experience. So I'll find those little things and be like, no, this doesn't make sense from a user's perspective. We shouldn't do it like this. And then I just stick with that. And, and I will fight and I will argue with our development team until we come to some kind of compromise. I, I, usually I don't win you know, right out. But there's usually some kind of a compromise that happens and the product in the end is made better for it. And that's kind of the purpose of the flow team. Um, they, they use some interesting terminology as well, dog fooding, kibbling, and tilting at windmills. And I'll talk about what that means in a second. Um, no one else calls them this, but after reading about them, I'm gonna call them this. I'm gonna affectionately refer to the flow team as the squeaky wheel of WordPress. All of those uh, little idiosyncrasies in WordPress, you're like, man, that's really weird the way this works. That's the flow team's job to find those and pester the core development team until something gets fixed. Uh, so it's my kind of team. They're all Zackles, it's awesome. Um, they follow a process called dog fooding, uh, which is a term that basically means, you may have heard, you gotta eat your own dog food. If you're passionate about this product, if you use this product, if you create this product, you need to use it. And so that's what they do. They use WordPress, they use WordPress intimately. The way that the design and UX team documents other products to compare to WordPress, these guys do just WordPress and they find things that they think WordPress can do better and they submit those things. One of the things, I wanted to get screenshots of it but I actually lost my internet connection and I wasn't able to do it. But there was this bug for like several versions of WordPress that nobody touched where only on the iPhone 6S Plus on WordPress.org, not on just general WordPress, when you went to the login page, the text boxes were askew. And they argued about getting that fixed for you know, several versions of WordPress. We'll find someone finally, so that's why I call them the squeaky wheel. They find those little things that that makes a difference in the long run. Like, like people need to, need to be able to um, use WordPress and that not look you know, like some weird, goofy thing. And so their job is to do that. So dog fooding is using the product. Kibbling is actually uh, taking the process of dog fooding, using the product, and documenting every step of the way and taking notes on what you think could be better and what wasn't a great experience. And then they have what they call their windmills, which are those things that are those really big undertakings. They're like, I don't know if we could ever get the WordPress core team to change this, but we really think it needs to change from a user perspective. And they call those their windmills and they, they call tilts whenever they kind of push uh, the team to, um, to update that thing or to change that thing. They call it tilting windmills. It's from the book Don Quixote. It's a really nonsense phrase that basically just means fighting an invisible or impossible enemy. Um, so they, they have the most fun terminology. I really enjoy learning about the flow team. Um, but yeah, affectionately, I refer to them as the squeaky wheel of WordPress. That is not derogatory in any way, and I think it's awesome. Um, they define flow as the path of screens interactions taken to accomplish the task and experience vector. Flow to them is a feeling. It's when you're using WordPress and you're unselfconscious and you're just in the zone, that's, that's the flow, that's a good flow. Anything that breaks that, that's, that's where they're gonna have a problem and that's where they're gonna argue for, for change. 
Flow is what happens when difficulties are removed and you're free to pursue an activity without forming intentions. You just do it. It just makes sense. How many of you saw the video? It went viral um, a couple weeks ago about poorly designed doors. I don't know if anybody saw that. Man, I really thought more people would have seen that. I love the video. I thought it was so cool. And the idea, I think it was like BuzzFeed or something that originally put it out. But the idea was there's these doors at the BuzzFeed offices that have handles on both sides. They're a glass door, handles on both sides, but they only open in one direction. And so this guy actually stood there with a video camera and watched the people who use this office every day and who know that the door only opens in one direction. And like half of the people like pulled the wrong way or ran into the door or like different things. Because when you have a handle, you assume that that means pull, right? And so they actually found this guy who wrote a book, and I can't remember the name of the book. It would have been really awesome if I could share that with you since I'm sharing his story. But they interviewed him, and his book is about the design of everyday products and why sometimes they suck. And he actually had a whole chapter on doors. Um, and he said, you know, you'll see a door like that that has the double handles, and it'll say, like, push on one side. He said, if you have to tell the user to push, it's a poorly designed door. You can tell the user subconsciously to push if you just put a metal plate there, and they know that, oh, it only goes in one direction, right? So that's kind of what the flow team looks like, is they, they look at things like that, and then they complain and say, hey, there's a way to make the user realize this subconsciously without you know, having to put a big push label you know, on the door. Um, so really cool team. As you can tell, I spent a lot of time on them. They're my favorite when I learned about them. I just thought they were, they were the, the coolest team ever. Um, and they, they dog food WordPress.org and WordPress the product. And oh, I apparently just stopped my slide right there. Um, <laughs> But uh, some, some other plugins and stuff like that that, they'll, that they work on. Then there's the community team. And they're awesome too. They are the reason that you are here right now. The community team is responsible for um, basically uh, putting on <coughs> WordCamps, putting on your local meetups. A great way to contribute to WordPress is if you don't already have a local meetup, start one. It's super easy. It's really easy. We started one. <coughs> In Chattanooga, we talked to the library there in Chattanooga, and we said, hey, we want to start kind of this, uh, this tech meetup. Um, it's about this open source software. And they are like, yeah, please, free. You, know, you can use our facilities for free. Come in. We would love to have something like that to put on our calendar every month to promote technology to get people in the library. I can almost promise you all of your libraries will do the same. You've got a venue for your meetup, right? If you already have one, join it. Um, they, they need you. They need the expertise that you don't realize that you have that they need yet. Um, and I'll, I'll get to an example of that in a little bit. But this is actually me teaching um, CSS at our local meetup. Just a really high level view of this is how CSS works. Here's some kind of neat tricks you can do with it if you've never worked with it before. Um, really, really elementary. It's what I could learn on Code Academy in like 10 minutes, right? Like it's really simple stuff. But there's a lot of people on our meetup who are completely new to the web in general, and they don't know how to do any of those things. And so even a tiny, tiny bit of knowledge can be way more valuable, especially in your local meetups, than, than you think that it could be. The community team oversees official events, like WordCamp Atlanta. They handle contributor outreach, they do mentorship programs, and they also have some uh, diversity <coughs> initiatives to attract uh, more diverse people <coughs> to the WordPress community. And lastly, uh, well, actually, I don't know if this is last time. That might have been a lie, but we're close to the end. Um, is the, the TV team, the, the maintainers of WordPress.tv. I found that the lead of the WordPress.tv team apparently lives in Atlanta. Somebody told me that yesterday. And their job is basically to take a video of all of the WordCamp speakers, which later are going to be put up on uh, WordPress.tv. Uh, and they approve, publish, and assist with WordCamp videos. They handle post-production. They handle captioning and subtitling for accessibility and translations into other languages. So someone is going to be looking at this WordCamp talk and maybe translating it into other languages, um, captioning it for the hearing impaired, stuff like that. And their team is going to handle that after the event is over. So they're, they're a pretty awesome team. Um, so now that I've told you all the ways that WordPress suggests that you uh, help out or that you can, you can uh, contribute, we're going to strike that and reverse it. And I want you guys to think about what you can do. And I'm going to give you some examples. Last year, I talked on customer service. That doesn't seem like a WordPress topic, but really it is. There's a lot of people in WordPress who have customers who have never had any training in business, who have never had any training in customer service. They don't know how to handle certain situations. And if you have any kind of experience like that, they want to know how to handle those things. They, they want that feedback. They want that knowledge. 
Uh, there are some people in the WordPress community who actually make a fantastic amount of money just telling people how to run a WordPress business. Um, so that is something that you could do uh, to contribute and make money, or it's something that you could do like at a WordCamp that you can just give a business talk and say, hey, uh, I'm a freelancer, and these are some of the struggles that I had as a freelancer, and here's how I overcame them. And that is incredibly valuable to people, especially at events like this. Um, when I was in Phoenix a couple weeks ago at a WordPress event, someone gave a, uh, a talk on interviewing for your first hire as a WordPress business. And what are some things that you can look out, you should look out for? The old, you know, what are your strengths and weaknesses question doesn't fly anymore. It's actually a terrible, terrible interview question and it's not, not a good way to get to know about people. And so he talked about some different strategies there. It wasn't strictly WordPress related, but it deals with the WordPress community. And so the, that kind of knowledge is the way that you can give back. If you have any kind of um, SEO skills, if you know how SEO works, people want to know that. If you are just good at planning or organizing, I guarantee you that the, the, the WordCamp team would love to have you uh, as a part of, of the experience and, and be able to help shape what this event looks like. Um, and the most important thing, and I'm, I'm a big advocate of this, and part of it is, is working in customer service for so long, I've learned that it's okay to not know the answers. But when you know how to find the answers, you can teach yourself and others how to find those answers, that alone is a really valuable contribution. Like we were talking about in the support forums, you won't know the answer to a lot of those support questions, but you do know where to find the answers. They're in the codex, or there might be training documentation written for it already, or something like that. And if you spend a minute or two to find those resources for someone else who doesn't know how to find them, and you not only provide those resources, but tell that person where you found them, you've set that person up, and from that point on, they know where to go to get help. And you've made a bigger contribution to the community than you know. Um, the best support answer to family, I told them, do you know the secret site for, for tech support people that all tech support people know about? They don't know what's the secret site. I said Google. Google. It's true. <laughs> it's true. But there's also a skill to using Google, which is a lot of times people don't know how to Google what they're looking for. When someone's like, I want the image on the left of my website, if they Google image on the left of my website, they might find what they're looking for. But if they know some better terminology and they say, I want the featured image on my WordPress site to be to the left of my post or something like that, then that is gonna find like much more precise results. Cause like my family, they'll Google something, but they'll give you like the most generic term, like, like uh, doesn't start, won't work, you know? <laughs> like, like the blender guy, I'm like, uh, my, my dad called me the other day from Ohio. Hey, my printer's not working, you know what's wrong? No, I don't, I'm 600 miles away. I don't know what you've done to that printer. And he starts telling me about like this Word document he's working on, like that's gonna like help me troubleshoot. I'm like, I, I don't know, it's, it, it's, I love my dad, he's, he's, he's kinda crazy. Team viewer is, is my friend, but I don't want my dad to know that I have access to that just yet, so. <laughs> Um, so again, this is me, Zach Skaggs. You can reach me at Zach at WPNinjas.com. I have a blog that I am terrible at maintaining at Zach.support um, if you want to read some of my musings on support in the past. Uh, I'm trying to be more active about updating it, but I had a, I had a, a long stretch where I didn't. And you can find me on Twitter at, at WPNZach. So thank you guys very much for allowing me to speak. I appreciate it. I will do that, yeah. I can Every actually do that. Every presentation has a Slack channel. Yes, I am going to do that right now, actually. That's actually a really good idea. Anybody have any other questions or anything? You'll be around. You do need to be out of here at quarter till 11.